Hello everyone, Wangjul here, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. Now it's been a little while since the last episode, thanks to me taking a break from YouTube, and it doesn't help that I know I'm running a day late with this episode. But I'm back, and very excited to continue with the campaign. Now last episode, we took the opportunity really with our current character, Lil Holt II, to tidy up our borders and get rid of the horrible yellow stains that we had here, thanks to the Netherlands holding Sunless here, and Belgium being around on the coast. But the problem with us taking that, it has elevated our threat levels very, very high. In fact, if we hover over, you can see that 97% threat it's going to take absolutely ages, at least if I'd done some basic math, something like 30... Yeah, about over 35 years, at the very least, to actually reduce it. Which is going to be a problem, because I was pottering around a little bit just before I started recording, to tidy up a couple of things and stuff like that. And I noticed really that as we're now coming into the end phase of this campaign, there's only two objectives we've really got left, and unfortunately, both of those are just going to require us to wait. Now, I say that because our first objective is the American invasion. Now, last episode, we managed to take Washington, and if I remember right, we actually named it to Queenstown. But, even though we've taken it and provided reinforcements, I don't know how many more stages we've got of the invasion. All I know is that we're going to have one of two outcomes. We're either going to be successful in the invasion, which will give us, I hope, some benefits for it, or it's going to fail and we'll be facing a counter-invasion from America. Now, until we know which one happens, all we can do is just wait for the events to fire and see what happens. So that's going to take time. The other objective we had and have had for most of the campaign is to make the Summer Queen Faith a main religion instead of a heresy. Now, the only way we can do that is by converting counties to follow ours instead of the main one. So, in fact, if we pop down to the ledger and find religion, I know it's one of the first few. Ah, here we are. Right. Let's go to here, get an alphabetical and try and find... You know what? It has noticed that some of these look pretty interesting, especially with the icons. Like here we got, where was it? Dynamitists. A Nobelian heresy. Now, Bow and the Merchant are in fact one and the same, and it's just the same person under two different disguises. Death is a sacred life. So because Adam Nobel was the one who also created dynamite. Wow, that's an interesting heresy. But some of these as well, like I just noticed down here, Ironist. What's this one? Ironist believed the event was caused by man's arrogant misuse of the gift of metal, which was given to him by the creator. They were in the steps, seeking metal objects of power through which they can connect with the steel godhead. They're famous for their use of improvised war chariots, ramshackle ironclads, that tear for the ranks of their enemies. Wow. Some of these look really cool. It'd be really good to actually come back and redo them at some point. But anyway, we're here to try and find... Hang on, Old Believer? The Russian church under the influence of the demon Nikon. Tried to pervert and destroy Christ's church. Oh, okay. Just wonder what it was. It has a nice little symbol there. But anyway, Summer, Summer, Summer Queen. Here we are. So we have 87 more Royal 40, and we have 38 counties that follow the religion at the moment. Now, we need to get more religion, more counties following our religion than Philemma. Now, Philemma is just below us here. It's got more Royal 40 of 8, but 67 counties. That's what, uh, 29 counties more than us. Now, if we want to make it to us as the main religion, we need to convert, at the very least, 15 counties from them. Now, while we can try and influence that using our vassals, which will be trying to convert on their own speed, as well as our core mage, really, there's not much we can do apart from wait. So, what are we going to do instead? Well, we can't conquer anywhere. So what I was thinking is, why don't we go out raiding? We haven't done that for quite some time. Now, our normal raiding grounds is actually up here in the north with Sweden, we've got Norway, and things like that. But since we may actually be facing a crusade... One second. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm really not concerned about this crusade. I'll be surprised if it fires. Hang on, I'm trying to talk here? Yeah, 35 with them. 281% total strength for us. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. But then what's this? As I don't recognize her. Yeah, in fact, who are you? Okay, you're a bastard, right? And you've only got... So you're an illegitimate child as well. Hang on, did I just see... Oh yes, this bastard off. Loholt Kaysen Kamlan. That's Lo our character's father, Kay's son. Interesting, so this girl is actually our half-sister. The thing is, though, while we may be her wards, she isn't really any use to us politically. She doesn't even belong to our dynasty, so really, it's not going to be much use to us. So, sorry, you're just going to fend for yourself. But yeah, we're going to go out and raid our thing down in the Mediterranean. I'm just interested in artifacts and see what we can pick up, because the amount of money we're making is quite good at the moment, 94 a month. And as we adjust things in that, and as you can see, we're spending a bit of money at the moment on the great works we got. We'll be making money from this, but also hopefully getting some cool artifacts, but we'll just have to wait and see. The money is going to be useful just because we are trying to build a war chest as an ambition. But yeah, let's go out waiting. I think that's the best thing to do. So we'll get the ships together. This actually gives me an opportunity to try out something. It just came up in the loading screen. And that is, if you hold down left alt and click and drag, yeah, it only selects the boats. Oh, that's good. I have to remember that. Right, let's get you guys to come down to here. Now, do we need 1,117 boats? Probably not. So, put you guys together. We'll split you in half. I'll take the larger one of the two. Because we do want to make sure that we can at least bring a, a decent amount of gold back. So we'll take that, we'll put you on the flank as well. Yeah, that's fine. Well, you are definitely raiding, let's get you on the boats and let's start sending you down. In fact, we've got our first target right here. We want to go for capitals because they're going to be the ones where his wall is going to have the most artifacts. So we'll see what happens. Do you guys, though, really want to see all of this, me just going around raiding? To be honest, I don't think you guys do. Especially since I've just spent five minutes just going over what the intro for the episode. I know, I have a really bad habit of doing that. What I'm going to do is, I think I'm just going to skip out and bring, show you guys this interesting things that pop up. Or anything that's important, because otherwise, yeah, we're just going to be sitting around watching me raid a bunch of places. So, see you guys in a bit. Right, interesting. So, Loholt has fulfilled his ambition to build a war chest. I mean, it was pretty easy. We just need a thousand gold. And even though we're only making 55 a month, it is just a matter of time. But we needed a new ambition. So, if I put back to him, one of our ambition opportunities was to groom an heir. Now, if we pick this, the problem... Normally, I would... But because our main title is the Empire title, and it's Imperial Elective, it means that my successor choice, which is our son Frederick, can't actually be groomed. Because when he comes of age, he's not the successor. In fact, this guy is also called Frederick. Now, I had to look for the election systems, and mainly it's just because everybody dislikes the fact that my candidate is a child. When he comes of adult, all of this will flip, and hopefully he'll gain a lot more support. But it means that we can't groom an heir at the moment, so I'm going to have to go for one of the other ones. The one I'm curious about is, which one was it? It was one of these higher ones. Here. So this guy, the Vice Royal of Wales, does not like my candidate because apparently my candidate is an infidel. Right? Now, colour me confused when I say this, because... Frederick, Summer Queen, right? The Vice Royal of Af of Africa, I was going to say. The Vice Royal Archibald. Ah. That's why. 
I didn't recognize they both got the same symbol, so I just looked at it and thought, oh, it's summer green, that doesn't make sense. Right, I feel a bit less bad about this. Can we not divert command this? No. What happens if we bribe you? There. Are you willing to consider it? There we go, that's much better. Alright, we'll lose 30 gold for some experimentation as well. Make the money back by selling off some gold ingots, I didn't realise we even had. But, yeah, we shall continue aiding. We haven't actually got much so far in terms of artefacts. The only thing we managed to pick up, which I thought was quite cool, was this thing here. The Lazian Battle Axe of the Cross. So you can see this was given to the King of uh, Galicia and Asturias by Pope Antonius for his participation in the Crusade for the Basque Kingdom. So we nicked it off him. It's actually got some nice little bonuses. But compared to the Dragon Cleaver, our own personal axe... <coughs> oh wow, set to cleave through countless dragons. That's cool, didn't realise that before. It does make me wonder, would it be a good idea to actually just give it to the Nigerian Empire? Because we haven't interacted with these for a little bit of time. We have recently sent eunuchs and concubines. Send another one in a little while, okay. But we do have a lot of grace. So let's have a quick look. Can we send an artifact? No, just my own axe. I'm not doing that. But what can we ask instead? Now when Frederick comes of age, I would like to try and arrange an imperial marriage. And we're going to have more than enough grace to do that. What we could do instead is start spending on things like Master Engineers to give us powerful province modifiers. A strategist will allow me to teach my commanders commander traits like the Way of the Leopard, Way of the Eagle, and things like that. This one could be useful in terms of giving us some decent commanders. I mean, we've got a lot of grace. We might as well just spend it all on different stuff. So let's start with something that's going to help us out as an empire, first of all. So we'll do this. Tulurales Tulurales will enlighten our nation. I apologize if I butchered the pronunciation there, by the way. But we'll let him get on with it. We'll get our um, men back to the ships as well. And I think our next target's actually going to be down here for the King of Andalusia. They got their capital right on the coast, which makes it a prime location. The only problem is the plague. Oh. Somewhere on Isabel Gordon Daughter. Are you any good? No. Um, give you a thrift dedication. She's, I mean, this is our tutor, and I can't even remember. Why are you married to? Oh, my cousin, right. Yeah, I'll just leave you, carry on with that. And let's see what treasures we can dig up by taking this. The white elephant comes. Troubling news has reached us from the distant east. The come reports are large ships overflowing with strange warriors and troops of war elephants have come from the land beyond the eastern jungles. They speak in a strange language, and cannot as seem to be reasoned with. They come to conquer in the name of their king, and they will not stop until his rule is established all over the lands of the west. But troubling times. Now I'm trying to remember, is that not the event that usually pops up for the Aztecs? I honestly can't remember, but let's have a quick look. Excuse me. I want to just see if we can spot anything that looks like an invasion or anything like that. I mean, they've got some territory here that looks like it's been raid attacked, but who's done the siege in? Thunder Dragon Empire. They say empire and it's got one land. One sec. Governator, but is that who it's supposed to be? Really? Nah, it can't be. It's only got... Four and a half thousand men. We've got more than that in our own vast, um, whatchamacallit, our retinue. And most of those men, as you can see, are actually been hired. They're not spawned special troops or anything like that. Yeah. I have no idea. Indian Expedition? No, you guys are all fine. Is it further up, maybe? Oh, hang on. What's, who's conquering this? These guys. Okay. What about you? The Moo Kingdom? Oh no, it's just this bit here. You know what? I have no idea where this is supposed to be spawning in. 
The Kagan of Neguin? No. Oh my god, hang on. We've got a group up here called the Lizardmen. What? Hang on, that's not, it can't be actual Lizardmen. No, it's just here. High Chief of the Lizardmen. The tribal faction. They follow the Canist old world cults. A blend of Mongol nationalism and Tengri paganism. Khanism is the belief in the divinity of the great legendary hero Temujin, who in times past conquered a world and gained the title of Genghis Khan. At the height of his power was betrayed by his friend Han and cast into the jaws of the Red Menace. Wow, that religion looks quite cool. The Genghis Khan is can call for Great Holy Wars. Huh. Might have to look into that in the future. Plus, we just got a group called the Lizardmen. How cool is that? But, to answer the original question, I can't see anything that looks like an invasion happening. There doesn't seem to be a lot of men spawned or anything like that, so... We'll keep an eye on it, I guess, but otherwise we'll just continue with our own thing. I have no idea who you were. But... So far, I'm a little bit disappointed about the amount of... We, the lack, I should say, of artifacts we picked up. Although, what's this? Screaming arrows. You receive a report on the outcome of the military experiments that your marshal asked you to sponsor. Apparently a new kind of self-propelled arrow was tried out based on Far Eastern models. Lit by fire, these arrows would scream and fly away, leaving a trail of smoke and an explode on impact. Though of dubious accuracy and prone to failure in rainy weather, they have proven some viable lessons. Extra tech points, I'll take that. And... Danielle Fitzlucy. Child of a concubine, lover's pox. That's not going to be appropriate. We don't want to catch any thing from, well, people that enjoy a bit of free love, you know? Anyway, let's continue the raiding. Oh, this is bad timing. So at the moment, we've got a bit of a plague coming through the UK. I mean, if I just double check, cholera. Okay, of course. Now, just as my ships came back with 5,000 gold, which we'll be able to happily spend once the plague is done, my wife died at the age of 35. We're going to have to find someone to replace her instead. I mean, replace her. We obviously want to grieve her loss, but obviously we need to accept that we can't remain unmarried for the good of the realm, you know? And I'm sure she would understand. So, who are we going to try and marry off instead? Do we have anyone who's a prodigy? Nope. Genius. Smart. got an attractive woman. Unfortunately, she's not going to be able to provide us children. My, you know, after a certain age. Attractive, beautiful. No. Um, powerful. No. Strong. Got Lucy, but again, 46 years old. Not quite what I'm looking for. We might have to look a bit further afield. Let's have a quick look. So. I've ended up spending a bit of time trying out different options in there, but a lot of people do not want me to marry someone from their court simply because of their skills, for the most part. The best one I've been able to find is this woman here, Gwendolyn. So she has the smart trait, which gives plus two to everything. And she is honest, diligent, paranoid and ambitious, I think are pretty good ones. The only slight downside is the fact that she is the Philemma Faith. But once we get her on board, I'm sure that we can sort something out in order to convert her. So she is quite up for a marriage as well, which is great compared to some of the options we've had. So we'll try it and see if she's willing to accept. There we go. Now if I click on you, we will take the gold, 680 is nothing to sneer at. And we'll be able to use it then to try and bribe her basically. Increase it by 24. Demand religious conversion, not just yet, but... Oh, we're in hiding, of course, because we do have cholera around. Okay. We'll look and see what we can do about that. Or we'll give you designated regions, that will help. Yeah, we'll just have to sit there and wait for time to go by. But we have brought back our ships, which were down here. So let's bring them back. Because currently we're down here, raging away. But once the ships get back, we're going to get back on board and we'll head up towards Corsica and Sardinia's capital. Start burning that, and then I'm thinking we'll head over to the Pope. Sure, leave it alone. 
Oh, Archibald died. What a shame. Um, I will let your son take over. In fact, let me just check the inheritance. Uh, 1-1. One, one. Alright, Wales, Wales, Wales. Kingdom of Wales. Is primogeniture, so we will go to our eldest when he comes of age. Okay, great. Let's let you then have the vice royalty title for the moment. Perfect. Okay, what we're going to give our son. Now, he's just come of age. Well, he's been waiting around to get an education, so I haven't had a chance to look at him yet. But let's have a look. Okay, diplomacy or learning. That's not too bad. We'll give you diplomacy, because getting people to like him is going to be quite a useful skill to have. Now, if we can give you a good guardian, though, bearing in mind that we have currently got Carlo going around. Alright, Kieran. Shrewd, groomed, brave, ambitious, greedy, gregarious. I think you'll be a perfect choice, actually. Look after my son and teach him well, good sir. Alright, we'll see if we can actually bribe him a little bit. Oh wow, it's 205 gold. Okay. Oh, actually, we've got a few things. We need a new spy master. Idrid, congratulations. And a new advisor. Now, we've got a lot of powerful vassals right now because I've given out all the vice royalties. I'm gonna let whichever one doesn't like me the least, you. Congratulations, Eleanor. And now you really, really like us. Fantastic. So, Spymaster is going to continue spying out over in the Papal States. We're currently burning our way through Sardinia. That is Sardinia, isn't it? Um, yeah, Sardinia. It took a second, I was thinking, is this Sardinia or is it Corsica? I always get the two mixed up. But yeah, you're busy doing off here. Alright, who else do we need, need indication? You. Uh, you can have stewardship. Sure. I don't know who she is, to be honest. My uncle... Oh, my cousin, right. Let's give you... Frederick is quite good for that as well. Just, diligent, envious... Okay, well, you can have her. Alright, let's let the waiting continue. Ooh, we got, just had a revolt pop up. Okay. Right, whereabouts is this first? And I can see there's something behind it too. Right, let's get through that. Oh, good. The Golden Kingdom of Nigeria has stabilised. Which means we should go back and actually check to see what else we can get from them. Excuse me. Oh, we're still in hiding, of course. Right. Has it cleared up yet? No, but it is slowly getting there. You can see all of Eastern England, and that is okay. It's just everywhere else. Right, we'll come back to Nigeria then in the future. Let's have a look. Where are these rebels? And do we need to deal with them? Make sure they have the blessing and both my wife and my core mage give me advice on how to earn their approval. Sure, offer to rebuild the church. I mean, that's what we've been doing the entire time, basically. But there we go. Oh, over the hills and far away. Right. After conquering the Americanists, the Redcoats have turned their attention to the mountainous region known as the... The Apple What? How do you pronounce that word? Wait, wait a second, Apple... Le oh, of course. I was watching Dukes of Hazard recently. You know the movie with Jessica Simpson and that? Appalachians. Is that how you pronounce it? Appalachians? Anyway, we'll go with that. The area is notoriously difficult to traverse, and rumour has it that the tribes of the regions were forming a great confederation to oppose Britain. However, the Lord Admiral's forces managed to kill the leaders of several prominent tribes in a pivotal battle, ultimately causing a dissolution of the confederation. Victory in the region is now inevitable, though it may take years to finally subjugate every isolated mountain hold and tribe. So remind me to build some proper roads in this country when it's, I presume, over. To be game. 2,000 prestige, 1,000 piety, and I have an artifact or a soldier joining the courts. Okay, when we get a flaming sword, we'll have to check that out. And we also get a request for more money. We can easily spare 1,000 gold, load the ships, send it off, and let's have a look at our new flaming... Oh, it's not a... Oh, it is a sword. 
Through some unknown means, this blade is permanently aflame even when kept under water. It is difficult to wield but in skilled hands and with the proper protection. It is a formidable weapon, encouraging allies while demoralizing enemies. So 0.2 prestige and piety, plus 3 martial and plus 20 personal combat. That's pretty good. We can't use it, I think, alongside our sword, can we, now? I mean, it does offer better martial and combat skill. But this one gives us a bit more prestige. And it does give bonuses for light troops and heavy troops when we're leading, which we're not. That is a pretty cool sword, though. Oof. I really don't know. I'll keep my one for the moment. Just because it's our family blade. You know, it's our axe. Our, what was it? Our grandfather made it. We spent 84,000 gold on it. By God, I want to keep it. So, let's continue. And see what happens with the next stage if we come across it. Oh, Frederick has now taken over. Excellent. Right, we've just got a notification pop-up saying about do we open the gates or not. If we don't, we will gain Craven. But if we have a look, is it worth it? I mean, we do have a Nigerian physician and he's highly skilled. Sure, we'll take it. Right, let's have a quick look. Now that we've opened things up, we can ask for another boon. Imperial marriage. Can we not do our son yet? Not yet. Got a few other options. But no, we'll wait for our sons to come of age. Let's get a strategist recruited. So this one will start teaching our commanders how to fight with the, the different uh, combat tactics. You know, way of the eagle, way of the leopard, way of the beaver, whatever. So we'll pick that one. Banjoka Banjoka will be at our disposal. Thank you. Right. And let things continue. So at the moment now, we're just about to actually land in Rome. Oh, you've converted over to Kono. Okay. So we're just about to land in Rome. We'll move my court mage in just a moment. I want to see what our initial charge is. Oh, we have to wait a little while. Okay, we'll see what artifacts we pick up from going after the Pope. What on earth has happened to you? Hang on, he's a lunatic. Has great pox. A drunkard. Lustful. Um, love as pox as well. I'm not going to lie. That's not exactly the most inspirational Pope that I would afford to, to meet, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, let's change my court mage and we'll let the raiding continue. Right, where are you? I right, move you over to here. Oh. Apparently we can usurp the petty tuck kingdom title? Really? I suppose technically it belongs. Sure. We'll finally take it. I presume then we'll have to give it away to somebody? Oh well, she is in charge, isn't she? So, yeah. Can we give it to you, maybe? Yeah, Duchy of Pontiers. Sure, there you go. Have fun. Knock yourself out. Oh my god, I just noticed this. So it's just popped up that two of my children are able to have an education focus. Now, they are two twins, and they were born before I started playing as Loholt. Now, I couldn't help but notice that the girl is called Jessica, and the boy is called James. We've basically got Jesse and James from Team Rocket as our children. That was such a convenient name choice, Jesse and James. <laughs> the only thing missing is one of them had a pet cat. That would have been fantastic. But what are we going to do with these two? Well, James is best at intrigue or at a martial. And the only good one he's going to be in stewardship, which is his worst one. To be honest, I think I might take the hits and let him try and focus on intrigue. Even though he hasn't got any trades suitable for it, just because it is his best skill. So, you can have that, and we will make sure you have a suitable guardian to teach you how to deal with this. Your aunt, actually. 
or your great aunt. And then your sister, Jessie, is going to have a martial education. I may have to look to see fat. We might cancel break your betrothal now. Yeah, I don't care. Right, let's assign you a good guardian. Vasseur. Appellation. Oh, this is the guy that joined the courts. Oh, wow, he's actually not too bad. Strong. Okay, greedy. Powder's actually quite good when it comes to children because it prevents them from taking over too much and possibly picking up bad traits. I mean, strong isn't thing attractive, might not be too thing, but to be honest, it might be better to go for someone else. Banjoka here is the Nigerian that we recruited. He's a strategist, humble, patient, shy. To be honest, you would be the much better choice. Good luck, my friend. Right. But yeah, I just couldn't help but notice we've got Team Rocket joined our of course. How cool is that? Ah, so we just had another son born to us with our new wife. Unfortunately, he has no inheritable traits, but I've given him the thrift focus, and I just need a suitable name for him. Um, why don't why don't we go for one of the most famous knights of all? When it came to King Arthur's course, let's not call him Lancelot. Lancelot. There you go. Is that how you spell it? There you go, Lancelot. That will do. There you go. We're still burning down Rome. It's just take it was taken but Rome in fact. We're just burning our way for the rest of it. It's just taken a long, long time. Sure, so that's done that. In fact, you know what we could do? Let's head back to our capital. Find our council. We need to send some gifts out. I'm trying to pass a law to improve these status of women. Because we've got some really good characters that can be useful but they're female which is unfortunate because the you know historical reasons which i say about a game based in the future you guys will know what i mean but if i pop you here and get you to oversee construction i was just interested one day builds i thought that might work okay if we head down to our castle of domicile because it can improve this the reason being, it allows me to improve all of these. Now, the one I'm interested in, just to save a little bit of extra money, is the Court Architect Guild. Now, we need Administration Room Upgraded. I'm doing it, I'm pausing it, because otherwise it just shoots by. Oh, we'll just let it do. Yep, sure. Sure. Thank you. Library. There we go. Upgrade that. Oh, they rejected it. Damn it. I might have to spend some of the money after we've upgraded, because we've got the money. I am tempted to just go ahead and upgrade the castle to the highest possible tier we can do it. Some of it, like, we can't upgrade to a fortress yet because we don't have the required tech. Although I will have to check the tech out in a second. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade all of this. So, yeah, see you guys in a bit. And there we go. We've got a full upgraded castle at the moment. Now, it's quite surprising, it didn't cost me that much money. It's just a case of waiting for it to up update so I can actually build the next one because we're going through quite a high speed. Well, we were. But now that we've done that, I'm going to try and upgrade some of my great works. So we did the additional statues for plus three dynasty opinion. Could go for bronze, but given its location and it's the most technologically advanced castle in the area, Let's go Watchtower Network. A plus 10% levy size is a massive improvement. So we'll get that for you. University of Oxford. To be honest, I do feel a little tempted to actually build it up. How much is that going to cost me though? 1,400. I'll tell you what, what we'll do instead, let's build up one of the rings. I'm thinking... We'll go... Rings of Diplomacy. Get the culture tech. And then we built the men here up. Let's try and get plus two religion opinion. Oh, that's going to take 47 years and 11 months. Sure. 
why not, hey? Eh? <laughs> there we go, that's all building up. And, yeah, things are going okay now. In fact, what we might want to do, since it just occurred to me, let's go back here. And we need to build up a hospital as well. Well, this is all going to have one day modifiers too. Which is going to cost us a ton of money to do all of this. Okay, we do that. And let's have a quick look then at our tech levels. So we can upgrade some of them. We'll do that and that. Shipbuilding, construction. We need to get it to six, don't we? If we want to get a fortress. But we'll build... Let's get that bit done. And we can't do any more tech. Okay, let's have a quick look. Upgrade these again. There we go. That's all of it. Now, we've still got other areas we could try and look into doing, like we still own the castle here at Devon. Could, in fact, build... Do you want us to start building something like a city up or something like that? I think we'll be okay for the moment. What I would like to do is maybe build a great work in our second capital over here in Dublin. The only thing is, what would we want to build? It does cost a lot of gold. I mean, ideally, I would like to do the Grand Fortress. But I don't think we have the right tech yet. Improved keeps and construction. We can't be that far away, can we? No, we've got four... Hang on. We've got four there. And we've got four there. So why can't I... Is it just a case of money, probably? Okay, let's just continue waiting a bit longer. Oh, hello! So at the moment, the raiding fleet is just down in Malta. We've taken Valletta just now, and then this has popped up. In fact, you can see her here. But we've just got this pop up, the Marching Through Georgia event. The Redcoats have reported their most convincing victory yet against a huge empire calling itself the Holy Columbian Confederacy. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had much experience with After the End, the sort of parent mod. The... Only Let's Plays I've seen, I've seen World 1D2 Gaming players the Rust Cultists, and I've saw someone, at least I saw one or two videos, they did Agrabah, I think it was? Like they played as Prince Ali, and it was around Florida, I remember that. So I don't know who the Holy Columbian Confederacy are, apart from an empire it seems. But anyway, these ridiculous people pride themselves on their heavy cavalry, and the Lord Admiral's letter admits that the surveyed ranks of knights were an intimidating opponent. But his handgunner sorry, handgunners <laughs> were able to dramatically reduce the effectiveness of their heavy armor. In a series of devastating pitched battles, the Confederate forces were defeated, and the Southerns had been forced to capitulate. The Lord Admiral had marched through Atlanta, reportedly receiving the crown of the HCC from the Emperor himself. With this victory, the British have subjugated nearly all the major realms of Eastern America and can rightly consider themselves Lords of America. It is a triumph. America is ours once more. Okay, so what does that mean? We gain 5,000 prestige, 2,000 piety, and one of these options. Okay. And we apparently got Ivanhoe. Okay, let's look at that. Ivanhoe. This novel describes life in antediluvian England and Scotland and is filled with heroism and romance. Among the sub ones, it's revered sacred status and number of copies only to the Bible. Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, South Anglo opinion is not the best. But plus one learning, plus one martial, 0.1 monthly prestige. Okay, that's not that bad. We also picked up a crown of lilies, but the crown of pearls is much better. Right. Did we pick up a new character as well? Like, we picked up that other guy before. Oh, it doesn't matter. But anyway, is that it now for the American invasion chain? Hang on, let me just do this quick. Um, Saint Guardian. Sure, you can teach her. But, yeah. Is that it, then? It looks like it. Huh. 
if it is the case, I have to admit I'm feeling a little disappointed. I mean, we have just conquered America, essentially, right? Yet, we haven't had any bonuses apart from that artifact. I would have thought maybe we would have some trade or something like that from America because we've conquered it, you know, very much like it did during the colonizing days. I don't know. If that is the case, I do feel a little disappointed. But I think it's a good place to end today's episode. So let me just finish burning down Malta. Right, so we can get that done. Thank you. Right. And we'll head over then to the ships in order to go after the next isle. Oh, and we just inherited the Duchy of York. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's head back up to here quick. We'll sort hand out the title and then we'll be done. So, York, York. Okay. Is there anyone we can actually want to introduce to the realm? Let's go that one. Clear this. And as long as they're in the realm, I don't care if they join the courts. We just want some good characters. So, my Chancellor I could give, but... Oh wow, I forgot to introduce this mod. So there's a mod on the Steam Workshop you, uh, you can find in the mod collection. But it gives characters that you've given councillor positions, and if you are a council, you know, a member, a councillor yourself, you would do the same, get the same thing, and you get bonuses to your stats to represent your experience. So this guy has gained plus one diplomacy and plus two general opinion because of it. That's quite cool. Right, but I'm not letting him get away just yet, so let's get you. Gonna have the include lower titles. I'm not giving away the whole thing, I'm just gonna I'm doing it bit by bit. So you can have whole. You can have Your Dale? Is that? Your Dale's over there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, well, any good commanders we want to keep? You're not too bad, actually. You've picked up direct leader somewhere. But one below is slightly better. Commander United Kingdom. Okay. Grant you some land. We'll give you. York? Let's give you Leeds. And then let's have a look. Let's give you... York. And then I think I'll actually let you have the entire duchy. There you go. Enjoy. So yeah, we'll end things here. So, American Invasion is now complete. The only thing we got left to do is make the Summer Queen of Faith become the main faith instead of a heresy. Now, how have been getting on with that? Because, uh, yeah, I did move you, didn't I? Let me just see how we've been doing. We've got 50 regions. They've got 63. Okay, so that's 13. All we need to do then is convert seven more. Because that will switch it over, and so we have one more county than them. And then that's the campaign done. Wow, we might actually be finished by the end of the next episode. And we've now got 100 more authority. That is fantastic. But yeah, we'll end things here, guys and girls. So, as always, thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed, and that you do join me next time for some more CK2. But until then, everybody, take care, and goodbye for now.